Today, Apple officially unveils their next-gen chip. The RX 7000 gets confirmed. NVIDIA's RTX 4090 and new Titan GPU are monsters, and Intel is completely falling apart. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, Apple officially unveiled their next generation M2 chip. And right away, if you've seen anything on this, you may notice that the M2 doesn't really compare well to their M1 Max or even M1 Pro. And that's because they're effectively starting this generation like they did the last. So this is the replacement to the M1, which means they'll likely have an M2 Pro, M2 Max, etc. later on. With that in mind, the M2 is pretty impressive. It's still an 8-core CPU with 4 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores, but it does have far more transistors at 20 billion, uses a second generation 5 nanometer process, comes with 24 gigabytes of LPDDR5 unified memory, and 10 GPU cores instead of the 7 or 8. According to Apple, the CPU's performance is around 18% faster than the M1, while the GPU performance is 35% faster. So not a giant leap, but certainly a generous generational upgrade. They also shared some really impressive graphs when compared to Intel's ultra-low power parts. For example, the M2 gets upwards of 1.9 times the performance when compared to the 1255U at the same power draw. Of course, these are first-party benchmarks, so it's best to wait for third-party reviews. But first, I've got some great news. If you're ready to take your passion for computers to the next level, you can try out the number one place I recommend for free today. I'm, of course, talking about this video's sponsor, Brilliant, the online tool that can help prepare you for a career in tech or just teach you something you've always wanted to learn. See, Brilliant was built from the ground up to teach the STEM field, and that's why they teach it the right way, by showing you and getting you to solve these fun, interactive puzzles yourself, all while guiding you along the process with explanations for why you were wrong and actually showing you visually. So it's the perfect place, whether you're a beginner who's looking to dip their toe in or a professional who needs to hone their skills. That's why I recommend it to everyone who wants to learn computer science or really any STEM field. And you can try it out for free when you visit Brilliant org slash gamermelt. Plus, the first 200 subscribers who visit the link will get 20% off the annual premium. That's brilliant.org slash gamermelt. Next up for today, we get some confirmation on AMD's next-gen GPUs. Originally discovered by Skyjuice on Twitter, Seasonic's Wattage Calculator, which gives you an estimate of your PC's power requirements, actually listed AMD's upcoming RX 7000 GPUs. Now, they have since taken it down, which I'd say that more confirms it, if anything. But I'll get to that in a second. What's wild is that it shows around the same power requirements as their RX 6000 series. As you can see, the 6900 XT with no CPU or anything suggests a 750 watt PSU. Those were the same suggestions for the 7900 XT. Now, if you remember, we recently saw a leak that says while AMD's RX 7000 cards are in fact built on an MCM design, there's only one actual G. GPU chiplet. So instead of using chiplets to combine more than one GPU, they're using it to combine other things like cache. Maybe it was AMD's original intention to include more than one GPU chiplet, but that looks to not have worked out. Of course, that still means they have more room on the chip since they offloaded other parts, but it was still a bit of a bummer. Well, the slower TGP may confirm that, as well as possibly confirm that these are in fact the RX 7000 series. With that said, these could have just been placeholders, I'm really not sure, but given they took it down, it really may not be. Time, as always, will tell. Next up, it looks like NVIDIA's RTX 4090 and the new Titan GPU may be even faster than we thought. If you remember a little while back, well-known leaker copite 7 Kimmy claimed that the RTX 4090 would be double the performance of the RTX 3090. Well, in a recent tweet, he claims that it's actually over two times the performance. Maybe that's what he meant here, but now we know. Not only that, but he still seems convinced that a more powerful GPU is coming with double the memory, something like a Titan class, because as you can see right here, he confirms that it would be more powerful. And yes, that is obvious, but it confirms that it's still coming. Now, one thing I will say is that this is likely NVIDIA's target performance numbers, because if you remember not long ago, Igor's lab essentially confirmed that we wouldn't see real-world performance numbers until mid-July. Still, anywhere near over double the RTX 3090, and even more powerful for the Titan-style card, or whatever it ends up being called, NVIDIA's next-gen is set to impress. Yes. And lastly for today, Intel at this point almost looks like they're falling apart. And I've got a few big stories that show this. 
First, if you remember in my last video, the company's next to high-end mobile ARC GPU, the A730M, looked really good. It performed right at a mobile 3070, and given their highest-end card has far more cores and higher clocks, things were looking up. Well, that same user tested the GPU in actual games, along with an official driver with support for it that I'll get to in a second. Either way, he compares it to the mobile 3060, and as you can see, other than Metro Exodus, the 3060 crushes the A. 730M in every test, some by a pretty huge margin. Now, there's a chance that Intel's dynamic tuning played a role in the performance like we saw before. But here's the thing. In a news story, Intel recently added support for their A730M ARC GPU to their driver. But get this, they did it by re-releasing a previously released driver instead of releasing a brand new one like you would think. And it still doesn't support the A770M or A550M. Basically, Intel looks to still be having major issues with their drivers. But the news doesn't stop there. At the recent Securities Global Tech Technology Conference, Intel's Executive VP and General Manager of their Data Center and AI Group, Sandra Rivera, confirmed that they're having issues with their Sapphire Rapid CPUs. They're claiming that Sapphire Rapid's ramp up is going to be later in the year than they originally forecasted. According to Computer Base, this is not the first time the CPU has been delayed. Now, this could just be reiterating an earlier delay, but regardless, Intel is clearly having issues. And that's disappointing, because their new CEO really sounded like he planned to fix those issues. Maybe it's too soon to expect that, but this definitely doesn't look good. So while that does it for today, are you disappointed in Intel? And what do you think about Nvidia's next-gen GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And definitely make sure to check out Brilliant in the description below. And as always, have a great day!